Hey everyone, welcome back to another Fun Fact Friday here at University Animal Clinic. I'm Dr. Sam, and so this week I thought it's Shark Week over on Discovery, um, and so we're all watching all those great shark videos, which is amazing, but I thought we could talk a little bit about some beach preparedness and kind of beach etiquette for your pets. Mostly our dogs, although you never know, people may want to bring their kitty to the beach, um, and most of these will still apply. But for those pets, there's a couple of things that I want to touch on. Of course, like the other week when we talked about heat, um, that's going to be a big one, especially for us here in Florida on our beaches. So heat's going to be a big thing. So on that note, make sure you have an area for shade. Make sure you have a bowl and water. Sometimes we think about bringing water and we don't think about how we're going to give it to our pets. So making sure you have a water dish available for your pet, especially out in that heat, especially on the beach. So our pets don't necessarily understand that salt water is great for swimming and not so much for drinking. And so they may try to drink the salt water if there's not fresh water provided to them. So make sure you bring a bowl with fresh water so that they can um, have that available for them. The other thing is leashes. There's a lot of leash laws in most states and counties. So even though it's a doggy beach, a lot of times one way people get kind of kicked out of a dog beach is if there's a leash law in their county and they don't have those pets on a leash. Um, and of course, making sure that your pet's well behaved around others. Make sure that you know your dog. Not everybody's pet does well around other dogs. And if that's your pet, then either finding a more um, secluded place to go uh, or making sure that you and don't go to the beach with your dog if you're if you're gonna have some issues there maybe on a boat and maybe be taking them swimming out that way where there's not a lot of other animals around if that's something they don't do well with of course knowing that there's gonna be wildlife around so whether that's pelicans um, shorebirds and sometimes other small mammals can be around so making sure that you and have your pet are aware that that's something that you may come in contact with again leashes help with that because you can make sure that if your pet is leashed that they're not gonna be able to go after some wildlife um, we don't want to have any deaths on the beach <laughs> so be careful if you have one of those birding dogs that they may want to go after some of those shorebirds so be cautious about that uh, be prepared you know it's always funny like the hitchhikers guide to the galaxy um, having a towel around can be a very good thing. You can use it for that shade. You can use it to help brush sand and, and dry off your pet. And you can also use it as a nice cooler place for them to sit on if that sand gets really hot. Because sand can get hot, our pets don't have shoes to put on to protect their feet. You want to protect their paw pads from that heat. So having a nice towel available can help with that. And then when on, one thing we don't always think about with our pets is that we just assume dogs all inherently know how to swim. Um, and I have a technician who knows that that's not the case. She has a dog that is not generally a swimmer and will sink like a stone. So knowing that your pet is or isn't a good swimmer, testing that out, being prepared with a personal flotation device. So just like people and children have floaties or um, protection vests, uh, floating vests, they make those for dogs. You can find them online and you can also find them at a lot of pet stores so that your pet can be protected when they go swimming. Put on their flotation device just in case. At least if you're not sure if your pet can swim or not, trying to go very shallow on a leash so you can watch them and see, do, do I have an animal that needs to have a personal flotation device or not? And then of course, the um, the all no the all inclusive kind of poop bag, making sure that we clean up after ourselves. We want to keep our beaches as clean and pristine as possible. So make sure that you have some kind of receptacle or bag to take care of their waste when they have it. Um, try to make sure that they don't urinate on the beach in the sand. Make sure we do that back um, in a more appropriate area, a dog walking area. A lot of dog beaches will have a dog walking area where you can take them to urinate and defecate and then come back onto the beach. Uh, but having poop bags available just in case they uh, they go where they're not supposed to is really important and really beneficial to have available to you. So I hope this will help all of you guys have a great summer, some great beach days with our pets. We love taking them everywhere. This also applies to the boat. If you take your pet out on a boat, personal flotation devices, poop bags, and being prepared with water and water dishes will also help you on a boat with your animals. So I hope everybody has a great summer, a great shark week, and enjoy some of those um, great television with that. And if you have questions for the next Fun Fact Friday, please leave it in the comments below. I want to talk about what you want to hear about or direct message us here at University Animal Clinic with some of your ideas for the next Fun Fact Friday. We're going to also be posting these on YouTube, so go check us out there. Like, subscribe, give this video a like and a share. That really helps us get our message out. And I hope to see you guys here next week.